Bang, 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 bang. What's up? What's good? What's good? It's another week of Lockdown with Nick, sponsored by Come On Now, the podcast. Well, not sponsored, but y'all know brought to you by Come On Now, the podcast. Y'all know we are rocking and we are going with this week's power rankings, week three's NFL power rankings. I got it locked and loaded and I'm ready to go. Listen here, we're going to start off real fast and quick. We're going to start off with the teams that are what the fuck. What the hell is going on? We don't know. We don't know. They need to figure it out soon, and they need to figure it out pronto. Man, the freaking Dallas Cowboys can't stop a nosebleed if it's safe. Though, if it was to save their life, they can't do it. They can't do it. Can't stop the run. Can't stop the run. Uh, Forty-five times the ball ran on them. Other team didn't even give a damn about it. Forty ers they don't know what the heck is going on. They can't pr- protect the lead. They got players on the team that supposed to be the guys and they're not getting it done right now got a couple injuries not getting it done what the f- another team is a what the f- is the Bengals what the f- is going on over there in Cincinnati they lose last night to Washington we're done with those teams not giving them enough attention because they don't deserve it they are out the top 10 the team that's on the cusp of the top 10 we have the Chargers still there you know Roman they have a loss to the Steelers we have Tampa, Baker come back down to earth. We have the Jets. They are looking good. Aaron Rodgers looked good specifically. He moved around. He had that Achilles moving, going, going, going. Out the pocket, in the pocket, stepping up to the left, on the right, get a scramble, chasing his man down the field. That looked good for the Jets. That's a good sign for them. Their defense is humming a little bit. They're coming off the edge. They're getting a little bit of pressure, but they don't make the top 10. They don't make the top 10. Washington also don't make the top 10, but Jaden... Mm, Jaden Daniels, he looks good. Rookie quarterback balling so far might be the leader for rookie of the year. He is looking good. Washington, are they a serious threat in the NFC East? I don't know. Let's stay. Let's let's look at them. Mm, give them a little bit more time. Let's watch them a little bit more. Let's watch them just a little bit more before we make that decision. They are on the cusp. They are outside the top 10. The top 10, we're going to start with Green Bay Packers. Malik Willis comes in. He runs the ball. The offense runs the ball. Aaron Jones runs the ball. The team runs the ball, and they play defense. When you have a plus seven in in turnover differential, that that means you're a good team. So right now, Green Bay sneaks back in the top ten. I am intrigued until they get their starting quarterback back. Malik Willis is holding it down against his former team. He looked really, really good running the ball, threw the ball okay. Oh, the Texans got molly whopped. Got molly whopped. I had him as a top team. Um, didn't look good. The Vikings got after them, man. The Vikings are relentless, man. They're D-line. They're, they're, they're after the quarterback. And Sam Darnold, I'm going to get into him. He's playing terrific. Um, whoo. So we're going to have to text if they drop down to number nine. The Seahawks, they make the top ten this week. Um, I'm still a little iffy about them. Not sure, but, oh, hey, give me a little bit more time to make a decision about them. But they do move into the top ten. They did win all three of their games. All they can do is win the games that are in front of them, and that's what they are doing. I don't like the teams that they play. They played the Dolphins. They played the Broncos. They played the Patriots. So, they're you know, their defense only giving up 248 yards on the season per game. Um, But I think that number is a little bit skewed right now. So, I'm going to give them a little bit more time. But when Tyler Lockett is your third receiver, that means you have a good offense so right now i have them at number eight and gino from miami um playing well broward playing well playing real good real good real good at number seven the lions this team man they are hmm let's see what's the words i'm looking for they take on the attitude and the demeanor of their coach they play with grit they are a no-nonsense team they're gonna fight they're gonna battle they battled back last week they're two and one the lions are at number seven at number six, I can't drop them too far because they lost only by three. The Saints, I had them number one last week because their offense was humming. They go against the Eagles. Their offense don't hum as much as it was before, and they lose the game 15-12. to 12. And I thought that was a perfect game to run all over the Eagles, but the Eagles put their foot in the line. They draw a line, and they say, hey, not tonight. We're going to stop the run. We're going to get control of this game. We're going to send pressure. We're going to be We're going to be everything that the Cowboys are not. We're going to make adjustments. We're going to fix what our problem is. And we're going to come out here and play a good deep, a good game of defense, change it up a little bit. And they come out and they win the game. So the Eagles are at number five because, let's see, they let their nuts hang last game. Let's just simple as that. They came out there. They, they did not get 
punched in the mouth. They did not get bitch. They said, damn it. Hey, if y'all going to beat us, y'all going to beat us with car and cars not beating us. Y'all not just going to run over us and push us around like y'all did last week to the Cowboys. So they come out there. Saquon Barkley is playing amazing. 117 rush yards per game right now. He's balling. He's balling. He's holding that team down until Jalen Hurts figured it out completely with the the couple of interceptions that he have over the season that just aren't really good, at, you know, putting his team in bad situations. But I still believe in him. I believe in that team. Um, big win for them. Big win for them. At number four, we have the Steelers. I'm still not convinced about their offense. I am not. I just can't. I just can't. Not yet. But that damn defense, that T.J. Watts, he fly off the ball like a damn missile. He, man, that one play that he got that sack. He was off the, the ball before the ball got hyped. He was back there with the quarterback. And I'm like, damn, that's just amazing. And he affects the game so damn uh, great, you know, for the Steelers, man. He changes the whole flow. He makes them a dynamic team. When he's out there, a different team. But when he's in, they are legit, especially defense. They look like the Baltimore Ravens of, you know, of old when they, you know, when they rush the quarterback and they knock motherfuckers out back there who came across the middle of the field with Ray Lewis and Reed and made big plays. That's what they're looking like right now, man. They're giving up less than 10 points a game on defense. That's tremendous. 229 yards per game. That's what they're giving up. Jeez, quarterbacks are throwing for that by themselves, but that's what they're giving up per game. Man, they have a good, good win against the Chargers. Um, So they move up to number four. Number three, the Minnesota Vikings. Who would have thought? Sam, I am Darnold, who's been a scapegoat for a couple of franchises so far in his career. Hey, that was shows you develop a quarterback. You give him a little time. You give him some weapons. You give him a new surrounding. You give him a JJ. Uh, uh, you, uh, give him a JJ out there at receiver. You give him an Aaron Jones out there. You give him a D line that's out there ferocious. Wait till he gets his tight end back. Oh my gosh, Minnesota, look out for them, man. Their defense is leading the league in sacks. They are. Downright dogs on the D line right now, man. They are after quarterbacks. If you're playing against them as a quarterback, man, get ready to get in the cold tub the next day because you're gonna get battered and bruised up because they are coming at you. They're hunting, they're hunting, they're hunting, they're hunting. At number two, the Bills. The Bills. They 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 look they look dominant as fuck. They look real damn good. Josh Allen is right now the MVP of the league. MVP of the league, he looks great. He's not doing too much, but he's doing enough. I mean, he's 16th in the league in passing yards, but he's had the 7-0 to touchdown to, to interception ratio right now. Um, their defense is playing good, but you know when you have when you get to play free, you're not trying to force the ball to digs. That's how you look. I remember when I played college basketball. When I played free, I played amazing, man. Mine came back from my, my sophomore year at FIU. I played D1 ball, point guard. And I felt disrespected by what happened in the offseason. So I come back. I work on my game. I'm a streaky shooter, but I work on my game. And I'm balling the first three games in preseason. I'm shooting threes. I'm not a three-point shooter. I wasn't. But I worked on it, so I became a good three-point shooter. Every shot I shot came off my hand. Felt good. I'm feeling in the groove, man. I'm playing with confidence. I'm playing free. It's nothing like it. And then one game, you know, we're playing against a D2 school. And we're in a battle. And I did this move where I went right and I did the D-Wade crossover pull back through my leg because D-Wade was my favorite player. And I took a mid-range jump shot. The crowd like, ooh, because, you know, I, I created a lot of space with the move. And I take the jump shot and Coach like, turn him up, turn him up, turn him up. He comes to the sideline and Coach Rocco, that was my head coach right there, he motherfucked me. Nick, what the fuck are you doing? From that day on, I did not play free. And I ended up shooting like 15% from three the rest of the season. I was hesitating. I wasn't the same player. I wasn't, you know, I, I, I started thinking. Right now, Josh Allen isn't thinking. He's just playing ball. I don't have to give it to Diggs. I could just go to this receiver. I could give it to Cook. I could give it to, to, to Shakir. I, I got options. I don't have to force the ball to one guy. I don't have a guy coming to the sideline, pounding my face about getting the ball. I'm just out there hooping. And that's what he's doing right now. And the Bills look good. The defense look good. They put a smacking on the Jaguars last night. They are number two. I can't put them at number one. Last year, I said, after the Super Bowl, I said, I ain't betting against Mahomes again. And you know what I did last week? I came and I said, hey, New Orleans Saints are number one. New Orleans Saints are number one over Patrick Mahomes, even though they haven't lost. Even though the games haven't been looking great, it hasn't been looking crispy, they are finding ways to win. I don't care if the referee 
are helping them or bailing them out. They're winning the games. If you want to beat the champions, you better go out there and beat the champions. And right now, nobody's doing it. So the Chiefs are number one. They stay at number one. They hold that. Well, they, don't, they move up to number one. And they might be there. I don't care how their games look. They'll be there until they lose. Even if they lose, they might still be there. Just because I'm not betting against Patrick Mahomes, they're the best team in the league right now. But there are other teams that are peeking and looking and trying to take that throne away from those guys from doing a three-peat. So right now, that's what we have right there. So from last week, we have Minnesota goes up, Cardinals drop out, Steelers go up, 49ers drop out, Bills go up, the Bucks drop out, the Chargers drop out, the Chiefs drop, go up, and the Saints drop down. And that is Nick's power rankings for week three of the NFL. It's coming to you every week, locked and loaded, baby. Pay attention. Let me know what y'all think, man. Please comment. Tell me, did I get it wrong or did I get it right? But I got it right because I'm right all night. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, this is Come On Now, the podcast. This is Lockdown with Nick. Tune in next week. I'll have the next week's power ranking. It'll probably be something, you know, a little bit changes because, hey, that's how the thing go. It is a little bit fluid. Things change every week. You know, you play against different teams. Different things happen. Different teams match up better against other teams. So we'll see how next week goes. But right now, this is what it is. Next power rankings. Y'all tune in. Y'all hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Make sure y'all getting all our content live and up to date whenever it's posted. Make sure it come to y'all as soon as possible. Um, tune in, subscribe, comment. We love to comment back. As y'all can see, Rudy's always here. He's always talking. I will comment back. We like engaging and conversating, conversing about sports, about, you know, anything we're dealing with sports. We love it. So please hit that follow button, subscribe and comment. This is Come on now to podcast. See y'all next week. Have a good one. Enjoy.